How can we develop detachment in our relationships? You know, the word detachment um, is, is sometimes not understood as well as it should, as we think of the spiritual arena. Um, most of us think of detachment as being away from something. And so, so uh, we just think we are detached from this, we are detached from that, we are detached from that. But when you when you look at the path, the spiritual path here is talking about positive mysticism. It's just saying we need to uh, excel in all spheres of life. We need to fulfill our responsibilities to our families, to our states, to the community, to the world. And and that means interacting with others. So how do we detach ourselves from a relationship is an interesting question we should all think about. I think the thing to understand is like, as a human being, uh, we need to uh, understand our relationship with the creation and the creator. And as we start to understand that, then we realize that um, we actually are a soul, which is a part of God. And then, as, as we realize that our life here now is in the human existence, then we get to a state where the realization sets in that this phase in this human body is temporary. It's for a certain amount of time. But this is not like a permanent existence. And the activities in this world are activities which have an illusionary impact on a being. Because this is a world of Maya. This is away from the real worlds. This is a reflection of the real worlds. So we're living in a world in which we are living in an illusion. And I think once you realize that, then you are able to detach yourself from the illusion. So the key is detaching ourselves from the illusionary world and recognizing that our true connection needs to be with the spiritual worlds. And when that happens, then we realize that a true relationship is with God. Yeah. All of the relationships in this world are relationships that we want to fulfill. And so the path of posthumism tells us we do our very best in our jobs, we do our very best with our families, we do our very best with our friends, we do our very best with the communities, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our countries, and on the globe. Realizing that that is all an illusion, is the key to our spiritual upliftment. And so, like, like uh, you have this saying in Punjabi, which says, Hath karval dil yarval, it means like, our, our hands to our work, and our hearts to our real goals, or to our beloved. And so our real goal, once we understand that a real goal is for the soul, 
to meet God, to merge with God, to commune with God, to be one with God. Then the realization that everything else is an illusion sets in. And so as we meditate, as we experience the real world, as we experience the joys of the real world, then everything on the world outside, you know, pales in comparison. And so we automatically are attached more to the reality and we get detached from the illusionary world that we are in. So I would say that uh, to be able to find detachment in our relationship, uh, the key is to be able to, to really understand, you know, what is in a relationship? What do we think? Or how do we feel? And know that everything in this physical world is an illusion. And so once you get to that realization, then you realize whether, you know, they have ups and downs, they have any other activity happen in any one of our relationships, that that is going to pass also. That those words of this too shall pass. If we focus on those words, we remember that this time in the human body will pass. And this is not the reality. The reality is in the regions within. And as we connect with them, as we meditate, as we go within and find the connection there, then automatically, you know, we are able to get to a state where our attention then is on what will truly, truly help us. And then automatically, we are not going to be having the, our activities in the physical world just affect us. And that's the key. The key is to be able to spend the time that we have in the physical body to be able to gain in the spiritual arena. And, and that happens as we meditate, as we connect with the divine light and sound within, as we experience the spiritual energy within ourselves, as we experience those states of joy and happiness and peace and bliss. Everything on the world outside pales. And when that happens, then we've really focused on what is truly, truly beneficial to us. How can we overcome the aftermath of a traumatic event? You know, accidents uh, like a car um, accident or any other um, accident do happen in our life. And uh, when we are in an accident, we feel very bad about it. Many times we're not sure if, if it was our fault or the fault of someone else. Uh, if two parties are involved, we always think it's the fault of the other person. But if an accident happens by ourselves, which happens quite a few times, then, then we start to blame ourselves. And, and then we start to think, you know, why did it happen? What should I have done before? That shouldn't have happened. And we go into the spiral, which makes it more and more difficult for us. So we should um, um, think about a state, uh, like if you have um, a sore in the body, and if you keep on picking at the sore all the time, it's not going to heal. Okay. So it's the same thing if, if an accident happened and we keep on thinking about it, we keep on thinking about it, we are as if we are picking at the sore and we are remembering those memories which are not pleasant to us. So what we need to do is we need to replace that memory which is not pleasant to us with memories which are pleasant to us. So memories of, of being with a family, memories of being with a spiritual master, memories uh, of, you know, visiting places that, you know, gave us calm and peace, are good to think about. And as we start to think about those memories which are calm and which are peaceful, which are loving, caring to us, then we'll find that our attention has gone away from that memory which was painful to us. And so it gets replaced but the memories which, which bring happiness into our life. And as that happens, then we'll find that we are defocusing from that painful state because whatever the accident was, if there was um, you know, damage uh, to the car, hopefully we all have insurances that will be taken care of. Okay. If we got hurt a little bit, hopefully with time, by being able to get medical attention, will feel better. 
and 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 the difficult period that we're going through will pass away. It's not that if one accident happens, it's going to stay for years and years and years. So we need to defocus from it as quickly as we can. And so the key is to focus on something which is more joyous, which is more blissful, so that we give time to heal. We give time for the attention to go away from whatever has happened. And we'll find, you know, in, in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months, it's behind us and everything back to normal. So the key is not to keep on focusing it and on thinking about it and, you know, just just poking the painful um, act that happened. And the key is to defocus from it, the key is to replace it with something which is joyous, which is more blissful, which is what will be more helpful to us. So I would go like that. Meditation helps us burn our karmic load. What happens when we do not meet our daily meditation requirements? You know, daily uh, we have thoughts and we have words and we have deeds, so we're making karma daily. So on a daily basis, Kriyaman karma is being made. And so we've been asked to meditate for 10% of the time daily, which is about two and a half hours. And as we meditate for two and a half hours, we're able to take care of, burn that Kriyaman karma. What is important to realize is that when we don't do that, Let's say we only meditated for half an hour, so, so only a little part of the karma got to be uh, taken care of. The rest of the karma that we are creating in the day is still there, right? So that's going to stay with us. And so, so it, it keeps on adding up and adding up and adding up. And, and this is why many times we find that many people who are on the path sometimes have a difficult time towards the end of their lives. Because that karma has been piling up and piling up and piling up and they didn't take care of it then. So then, it's over the tail end of their life, they have to go through a more rigorous kind of a situation to be able to deal with paying that karma off. Okay. Uh, because all the karma needs to be paid off so that our soul can merge in God. So, the key is to be able to, to put in the time which is required to take care of the daily karma on a daily basis. If we can do that, that's best, because then the daily karma is gone, so the last day of our lives, uh, we're not bothered with the karma coming from the past, everything's been taken care of. And that's why we're asked to do Simran, so that um, our attention is on God, and we don't create any more karma there. We try to have no thoughts and no words and no deeds, so that we can pass from the physical uh, to the spiritual. If, as we go through our life, we have an opportunity to, to do more meditation than is prescribed, then what happens is we've got a buffer. Because okay? we've, we've meditated more than was prescribed, so we have a buffer. So towards the end of our life, it is much easier for us to pass through into the spiritual regions, because here we have a buffer, and if some difficulty does come in to our life towards the tail end, because of, you know, pralab karma, which has to be dealt with anyway, you know. Pralab karma is a karma which has to go in this lifetime anyway, irrespective of our Kriyaman karma, irrespective of the Sanchit karma. Sanchit karma is the store of the karmas, which is associated with us. Pralab karma is one which will happen in this life, Kriyaman karma is what we create, okay? So what is supposed to happen is going to happen, okay? But if we have a buffer, we are able to deal with that part nicely. And so the key is to try to um, make like a store, little storehouse of, of time and meditation for ourselves so that we who are not aware of what is going to happen towards the end of our lifetime, do have some more storage of, of goodness that we've created for us, a spiritual wealth that we've created for us, which can be used towards the end of our lives. So the key is to realize that all karma needs to be paid off, otherwise we'll come back into another existence. Okay? 
Sant Kipal Singh Ji Maharaj very gracious uh, when he uh, made this commitment to all of us. He said, those who are initiated by a perfect spiritual master are not going to fall below the human existence and they will get another human birth if, if all of their karma is not wiped out in this lifetime. And he said the maximum we can go through is four lifetimes, but then definitely we'll be in a state where it'll be all uh, wiped out. But there's no need to wait for that. You know, we can be back out of the wheel of transmigration in this with lifetime. And this is where he recommended like 10% of the daily um, time should be spent towards our spiritual progress. So the key is to be able to, to do, find the time on a daily basis. If we can, then we try to catch up as quickly as we can, because otherwise, uh, sometimes um, at, towards the end of our life, we might be going through a much more difficult period than we would if we have a little buffer to help us uh, during that time, during that stage of our life. How can we increase our lifespan if our breaths are numbered? When we come into this world, we are all given a number of breaths that we'll be passing through. And so it's interesting to see that um, over time, uh, the life expectancy of uh, a human is going up. Okay. There are many more medical advances today. Um, there are many... Uh, parts of the body which can be exchanged today than we were before, a lot of these knee replacements and all these other things. And then, you know, there are many mechanical devices or other devices which can replace other organs in the human body. Okay. So the physically, the body can stay longer. And the key to understand is that as we breathe, we all breathe differently at different states of our day-to-day -day activity. Okay. When we get angry, our breaths are short and they're coming very quickly. When we're distressed, we also get into that uh, frame of mind. Or we get to the state where our breathing gets faster. So the faster the breathing, the earlier we're going to go from this uh, physical existence. What happens with time is many people are looking for a lifestyle which is calmer and peaceful. Okay? So when we go for a lifestyle which is calmer and peaceful, what it does to us is it is lengthens the time of our, each one of our breaths. So as an example, let's say meditate. So when you're meditating, you're not like going, huff, 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 you know? So you are meditating and your breath is coming very calmly, okay? So, so in one of those breaths, you might have like three-fourths of another breath or something might be the same time, okay? And so you've already lengthened the time that you are going to be staying in this world. So I think what is happening with time is that the lifestyle of people, people are all going for a lifestyle which is going to be more fruitful. And, and with time, and it's also very interesting when you look at the life of the people whose life is longer, because there are some places in the world where people are supposed to have a longer life than many other places in the world. Okay? You find that life is much more calmer. Uh, they, they, they are in a state where they whether they call it meditation or not, that's their business, but their lives are much more peaceful, they, they are more uh, content with themselves, and, and, and then their life is a little longer than of other people. Also, the thing to understand is, if the average lifespan goes up, doesn't mean that as a person, mine or someone else's will go up. Each one depends on their own lifestyle. So as a human being, it is us who affect the length of the stay in this human body ourselves. And so, as, as we get to states where uh, life is more calmer, uh, it's more meditative, it's more peaceful, turmoil in our life is less, 
then our breaths are coming very, very slowly. Okay? And automatically, the time of our uh, stay in the human body will get lengthened. So I would try to understand the extension of a life in, in being able to lead lives which are more calmer and peaceful. And with time, uh, we're all gravitating to those kind of existences. And what is very interesting is that we go through many ups and downs of life. And, and, and many times we are so caught up in whatever state we are in that we are unable to focus on what truly is helpful to us. But as we add the meditative process in our day-to-day -day existence, we find the life gets definitely better, more peaceful, more calmer, more joyous. And it's the quality of life which is more important than, than anything else. So the quality of our life suffers when we are in a rush. The quality of life suffers when we get angry at our children and our people at work because we're in a rush and we have to do something at a certain time. And we breathe much faster at that time, okay? And also there's more tension that we create. And, and the more tension we create for ourselves and others around us, the more difficult life is. So the key is to get to a meditative state, to put meditation in our day-to-day -day existence. And as we do that, we will find that all other aspects of life get easier for us. Things don't bother us that much. We get the joy of the worlds within. And so then the things in the world outside don't affect us as badly. Because, you know, our attention is not there. And this happens because we can connect with the source, all peace and joy within. And that's what meditation is all about. It's to make our quality of life better. It's to help us know ourselves truly. It's just to connect us with God. It's to be off the wheel of transmigration. And so any time you can put in meditation is like a boon. Okay? The more you put in, the better off you're going to be. And, and uh, uh, as, as we uh, live in this world, we de definitely need to survive in this world. So you can't be meditating 24 hours a day. You can't, don't want to live off someone else's income, you know? So we, we on, on our path, uh, we're supposed to sustain ourselves and our families and fulfill our responsibilities. So we all go to work, whether we have a business or we work with someone else, or we teach or are working online these days. So, so we, we generate some income to be able to survive in this physical world. Okay? But we should realize that that's not our goal. We need to survive here, we need to take care of the kids, we want to be sure they can go to school, we want to be sure uh, we have enough means to, you know, have them go to school. We provide as parents, we want to provide the best um, kind of education, best kind of training for our kids, we want them to be better than us. But we need to realize that, that what is more important is that we do all this of calmly and peacefully because that's where our quality of life is going to be better. That's what will make our life more enjoyable. That's where all the interactions are peaceful. It's only when we are rushing here and there that we get angry. I mean, if there's no rush, what's the problem? There's no problem. But there's a rush of going here, like this in the morning, if, if, if the mother in the house has to take the kids to school, how much tension is there all the time in most homes? The kids can't wake up properly. You get them, you get them to shower at night or in the morning, whichever processes are there. You have to make sure they eat breakfast and they catch their buses. And in the process, because of the time constraints, people get angry at each other, you know? And you say things that you don't want to say. And you feel bad later on, after the kids are on the bus, then you feel bad, why did you do this? But that happens to everyone. And so the key is to be able, if you, you, know, if you relax, you can find the time to meditate, then be able to do whatever you have to do. So you have to get to a lifestyle like that. That, that means you have to sleep early at night. You can't be up till you know, two in the morning and expect to be up at six to get ready to go to school. So it's a question of 
being able to set your priority rate. And the priority which is correct is the priority to grow spiritually, the priority to experience God, because we all can experience God in this very lifetime. There's not a single person here who can't experience God. It's our birthright. But we need to make use of that birthright. And to experience God, we need to sit in silence. There's a lot of chattering around, how are we going to experience God? This is where the meditative aspect of our life comes out loud and clear. And, and that's why, you know, the talk about 10% of the daily time being spent in our meditative practices has been talked about. You know, in the beginning we might think two and a half hours is a lot of time, but look at how much time we spend. Most people are spending over five hours just on the internet or something. So, you know, if, when you start to think like that, then two and a half hours is not that difficult to take out. Especially if they're going to be helpful to you. It would be much more helpful to spend two and a half hours in meditation than two and a half hours on the internet. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So, so we have to set our priorities and we have to uh, make sure that we do find the time to meditate. So let's meditate for a few uh, minutes. Uh, please sit as comfortably as you can. Uh, close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeballs should be straight, focus eight or ten inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, those of you who have been initiating the message of beyond, uh, please do your similar. And those of you who are new here, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. This repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud. I pray to God Almighty to help each and every one of us here connect with the divine power within and to experience the divine light of God within ourselves. I will be sitting for a few minutes and may the blessings of the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Singh Gibal Singh Ji Maharaj, and Dhyal Purush and Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj, I be with each and every one of you, and may you be guided towards the light. Um, I'll be getting you out of this meditative state, and my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
please live off and please live off. Thank you.